So we're going to be looking at radians. And radians you may have heard of. There are people in the class, if you do further maths, you probably know about some of this already. So you can see this is a bit of a recap. And radians are basically a different way of measuring angles. And they are, in many ways, a more superior way of measuring angles. And we're going to find out a lot more about that. So the first thing we're going to be starting off is learning what actually are radians. Why do we use them? How are they related to degrees? And then as we go through this chapter, we're going to be looking at things to do with geometry again. We're going to be looking at stuff that you may have um, been familiar with, either from GCSE or from things that we did in year 12 to do with like the sine rule and the cosine rule. But we're just adding some things in using radians. We're also going to be looking at solving trig equations in radians. And that's going to be a great opportunity for us to recap some of that stuff from chapter 9 that you've all watched my videos of, even though I wasn't teaching you. And then the last thing we do is a very, very small thing called small angle approximations, which is something that is new to the A-level from the last few years. And so it's not really come up very much. But I will tell you more, obviously, about that when we get to it. OK, so we're going to talk about radians to begin with. Like, what actually are radians? Well, I've already said that it's something to do with measuring angles. So I've said here, so far, we've used degrees to measure angles, with one degree as a 360th of a rotation around a full circle. Any ideas of why we've done a degree as 1 360th? It feels like a really random number to have picked. Why do you think when people were trying to do degrees, they decided to do 360 as a full circle? Any ideas about 360? OK, well, 360 is a very special number because it's divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, which means that a circle can be split up into lots. It can be shared out amongst those pieces really nicely. So if I wanted to take a full circle and split it into 12 pieces, instantly each of those pieces is 30 degrees. And so that's very convenient if you're doing anything to do with measurements or if you were trying to share things out in a particular way. So 360 was used as the original number for the number of degrees in a circle because it was just so shareable. OK? Quarters, 90. Eighths, 45 degrees. Loads of ways that it can be split up. So that's why 360 was used. But it's funny because you just have always thought, oh, well, 360 degrees is used. You know, someone one day picked that. That's, you know, it's not true. It's just someone said there are 360 degrees in a circle. So you need to start thinking radians is just a different way of measuring things. One radian, however, and this is the definition of a radian, is the movement of one radius's worth around the circumference of the circle. In other words, if the arc of a circle is equal to its radius, then the angle subtended at the center is one radian. So I'm just going to pause there, because that sounds really confusing. And this diagram is going to help us. So it said, uh, in other words, if the arc of the circle, which is here, is equal to its radius. So this curved line here is the same length as this line that we've got here. If that is true, then the angle that is subtended, which is a posh way of just saying the angle that's at the middle, the angle at the, mid at the middle is one radian. So it's very different to how we've measured degrees before. It's just a different definition of it. And you're going to have to trust me about why this definition is so important. It's because it relates, it makes so many other things in maths work properly. OK, you just have to trust me with it for a while. So I've said, outside geometry, mathematicians nearly always use radians. You'll have to trust me that this will make more sense why later in this chapter. And it's to do with calculus. You know, when I say calculus, what do I mean? What do I mean, calculus? Differentiation and integration. Differentiation and integration together is calculus. And calculus only works if we use radians. And you'll see why that is true later on. OK? So this is one radian is when this outside section, that distance, is exactly the same as the distance of one radius. So I'm going to show a bit of a demonstration here that will help us visualize what is happening. Um, let's see if I can make this full screen. OK, I'm actually going to make the radius 1, just for the sake of this demo. Whoops, not 0 0.99. Oh, for God's sake. That would be the rest of the lesson, me trying to get it to 1. OK, and I'm going to zoom in a bit. 
OK, so at the moment, this angle theta, we don't know how many radians it is. But when I move this around to here, that is exactly one radian, because this blue line is, is one length. OK? Now, as I keep moving it around, I have another radian, because it's now two lengths of the radius around the outside. And then over here, I would get to three radians. And then over here, what do you think the number of radians is? It does actually say, but what, how many radians is over here? It's pi. It's, three. it's not quite pi because of the way I'm dragging it around. It's pi radians. I'm going to try and work out why it's pi radians in just a second. So as I keep going around, I've got four radians, five radians, six radians. And as I go all the way back to the beginning, it's 6.28, which is 2 pi. OK? So we're going to try and work out why that is true. Let's go back to this page here. So let's think about it, what we just said, with a semicircle. OK? If this distance here is 1, what is this distance? around here? It, what is the distance? If this is a semicircle, the radius is 1. Pi r, pi it's just pi r, isn't it? Because the, the full circumference is 2 pi r. So it is just pi r. And pi r is pi multiplied by r, which is, in this case, just 1. So that is why, because the length of this arc is pi, that means that the angle in the middle is pi radians. Just like here, the length of this is 1 and the length of this is 1. The definition says that radians is 1. And so if you have a full circle, so we're going to say that's the radius 1, and we want to know what is the arc all the way around the outside. Well, we know it is 2 pi multiplied by r, which is 2 pi multiplied by 1, or 2 pi. That must mean that the angle inside here is 2 pi radians, OK? So that's the main thing I want you to commit to memory is this, OK? Half of a turn is pi. That's all you need to, that's what you need to start off by knowing. Half of a turn of a circle is pi radians. And I've got this nice diagram here that is going to help us see some of these connections, OK? So I'm going to ask you in just a second to fill in the equivalent angles in degrees around the circle. Now, I don't know if you remember this from any of the videos you've watched of mine on trigonometry, but which direction do we measure angles on this, on this diagram? Anticlockwise. Anti yeah, it does say it up here, but if you didn't read that, I'm hoping you remember that they measure anticlockwise. And you start from this section that we have over here. That's why on that demo we just saw they were starting from the positive x-axis. and. Because pi is equivalent to 180 degrees, you should be able to fill in these other degrees purely with your knowledge of fractions, OK? So obviously up here, we know that this angle from here to this line is 90 degrees. But also I've got that it's half of a turn. And half of a turn is 90 degrees. Could anyone just tell me any of these other ones just tell me what they think it is in degrees and why they think it is in degrees, and then I'll let you have a go at doing them yourself. Which one is 45 degrees? Pi over 4, yes. Yeah. So this is because it is a quarter of a turn, of a half turn, a quarter of this 180 degrees turn. And a quarter of 180 is 45. Um, could you just tell me one more? Harmon, one more? Uh, 270 is 3 over 2. Right? Yeah, and we'd actually probably call this 3 pi over 2, but you're right, it's the same thing as 3 over 2 pi. Um, but just getting in the habit of how we tend to say things, but perfectly correct what you said. Maybe just one more from um, Ahmed. Three over four pi. Yep. Three, uh, one hundred thirty-five. Yeah, good. Three over four pi is one hundred and thirty-five. How? What were you doing in your head there? I was doing. Yeah. What were you doing? How? We, how did you come up with one hundred and thirty-five? Yeah. So you're you're thinking of what is three quarters. 
of 180. So I'm just going to give you a bit of time to fill in this circle. If you have finished filling in the circle, I want you to just try and remember as much of it as you can, because we're going to do a bit of a game to try and figure out where these things, uh, where these things land in a second. So I'll give you a bit of time to have a go at that. <laughs> 